Film star Marlene Diedrich was one of the 20th century's most enduring style icons. Marlene Diedrich possessed a mythical allure, actively crafting her enigmatic persona. Her mastery of creating and manipulating a distinct star image influenced modern-day pop icons, notably Madonna. In the 1930s, a remarkable German talent emerged on the global stage, taking Hollywood by storm. Marlene Dietrich became a cinematic idol, dazzling audiences with her on-screen presence. However, her journey did not end there. During the tumultuous years of the Second World War, she selflessly dedicated herself to entertaining troops, spreading moments of joy amidst the chaos. As time went on, Marlene Dietrich's career took an unexpected turn. In the 1950s and 1960s, she defied age conventions and embarked on a new path as a concert singer. Her voice transcended time, enchanting audiences and solidifying her status as a true legend. What set Marlene apart was her ability to maintain an air of ambiguity and mystery, challenging societal norms and embracing her gender-bending persona. From the very beginning, Marlene Dietrich crafted her narrative, blurring the lines between truth and fiction. She possessed a unique talent for obscuring details about her origins and accomplishments. Born in December 1901, in the vibrant district of Schoenberg, South Berlin, she entered the world as Marie Magdalene Diedrich. However, as she blossomed into her teenage years, she fashioned a name that would become synonymous with her stardom, Marlene. Tragedy struck Marlene's life at a young age. Her father, a police lieutenant, passed away when she was just six years old. Later, when she was 17, her mother's second husband, a soldier, succumbed to wounds he received during World War I. This left Marlene and her sister to be raised in a predominantly female environment. Despite the hardships, Marlene's education at the August Victoria Academy for Girls in Berlin from 1907 to 1917 and her natural talents for music shone through. She even began taking private violin lessons at home, nurturing her passion for the instrument. During her teenage years, Marlene seriously contemplated a career as a concert violinist. At the age of 17, she moved to Weimar to study under the esteemed teacher Robert Reitz. However, a twist of fate intervened. Alongside her dedication to music, Marlene developed a deep fascination with the stage and theater. Returning to Berlin in 1920, she found herself playing the violin in a small cabaret ensemble to earn extra income. Sadly, a wrist injury dashed her dreams of achieving the highest level of virtuosity in playing the violin. In 1921, Marlene embarked on a new journey, stepping into the world of theaters as a chorus girl and taking on walk-on acting parts. Her talents and ambition led her to audition for the renowned Max Reinhardt Stage School in Berlin. It was in 1922 that she made her first appearance in films, starting with So Sind Die Manor. The following year, in 1923, Marlene secured her first leading role opposite William D. Turl in Der Mensch and Wedge, Man by the Roadside. It was during the making of her next film, Tragodie der Liebe, that she encountered a significant figure in her life, Rudolf Sieber, an actor and director who would later become her husband. In May 1924, Marlene and Rudolf exchanged vows, and their daughter, Maria, entered the world just seven months later. Although their marriage lasted only five years, Marlene and Rudolf maintained an amicable relationship and never felt compelled to divorce. Their bond endured until Rudolph's passing in 1976, leaving behind a lasting connection between them. Marlene's romantic adventures began even before her marriage, as she engaged in a series of passionate love affairs with both men and women. These relationships would go on to shape her life in profound ways. Among them was an affair with the Austrian Hollywood film director, Joseph von Sternberg, and their connection would have a transformative impact on both their paths. Marlene continued to pursue her career in both film and stage acting, taking on roles of varying significance. Gradually, she began to gain recognition from German movie and theater audiences. She even found herself compared to the rising sensation in Hollywood, Greta Garbo, 
who was captivating audiences with her performances at Metro Goldwyn Mayer. In 1929, Marlene landed a minor role in a musical revue called Zwe Krawatten at the Berliner Theater. It was during this time that she caught the attention of Joseph von Sternberg, who was scouting Berlin's theaters in search of a singing actress for his upcoming movie, The Blue Angel. Marlene's presence intrigued von Sternberg, and he saw in her the potential to embody the character of Lola Lola, a seductive cabaret singer. This marks the beginning of a fruitful collaboration that would span multiple films, proving mutually advantageous for both the actress and the director. The Blue Angel marked a turning point in Marlene's career as she mesmerized audiences with her performance and her rendition of the new iconic song, Falling in Love Again. The film itself achieved international acclaim, catapulting Marlene to stardom. Paramount Pictures recognized her potential and offered her a one-movie contract, envisioning her as their answer to Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's Greta Garbo, who had been making waves in the industry. Following the footsteps of Joseph von Sternberg, Marlene embarked on a journey to Hollywood. Their first collaboration in the new setting was the film Morocco in 1930, where she shared the screen with Gary Cooper. The movie not only achieved tremendous success, but also elevated Marlene to the ranks of Hollywood's top stars. It even earned her a coveted Academy Award nomination, her sole recognition from the prestigious institution. Paramount was quick to recognize her star power and signed her to a long-term contract, launching an unprecedented marketing campaign worth $5 million. A period of unparalleled triumph ensued, as Marlene and von Sternberg crafted five more remarkable films together. Works like Shanghai Express in 1932, The Scarlet Empress in 1934, and The Devil is a Woman in 1935 showcased their artistic brilliance. However, their partnership came to an end after The Devil is a Woman, and many critics believe that Marlene never reached such artistic heights again. In 1937, her film, Night Without Armor, faced disappointment both at the box office and in critical reception. Nonetheless, Marlene remained one of the leading Hollywood stars of the 1930s. She experienced a resounding success in the Western satire, Destry Rides Again, in 1939, where she portrayed the spirited saloon girl, Frenchie, alongside James Stewart. Throughout the tumultuous years of World War II, Marlene Dietrich, known for her strong anti-Nazi stance, stood out for her unwavering supports of the Allied war effort. She fearlessly performed concerts for the troops on the front lines, boosted morale, and tirelessly contributed to raising war bonds set in record numbers. Her dedication and contributions were acknowledged and honored as she was bestowed with the Presidential Medal of Freedom by the United States government for her invaluable war work. Additionally, the French government recognized her with the prestigious distinction of becoming a chevalier, later elevated to commander of the Légion d'Honneur. In the 1940s, Marlene continued to grace the silver screen with her presence. Although the films she appeared in during this period were well-produced and well-directed, they failed to capture the elusive charm needed for major box office success. Titles such as Manpower, The Lady is Willing, Pittsburgh in 1942, Follow the Boys in 1944, and A Foreign Affair in 1948 showcased her talent, but they fell short of becoming significant hits. As the 1950s unfolded, Marlene's filmography became sparser, with notable entries including Stage Fright in 1950, Witness for the Prosecution in 1957, Orson Welles' Touch of Evil in 1958, and her final noteworthy film, Judgment at Nuremberg in 1961. Tragedy struck Marlene's entertainment career in 1975 when she suffered a leg injury during a stage performance in Australia reportedly due to excessive alcohol consumption. This incident marked the end of her active involvement in the entertainment industry. A brief appearance in the film Just a Gigolo alongside David Bowie in 1979 was followed by her withdrawal into seclusion within her Paris apartment. It was during this time that she devoted herself to completing her memoirs, which spanned three volumes, Marlene Dietrich's ABC in 1961, 
My Life Story in 1979, and Marlene in 1987. During the final 12 years of her life, Marlene Dietrich's health declined, rendering her an invalid and prompting her to withdraw from public view. She limited her interactions to her family and employees, maintaining contact through letters and telephone conversations with her close friends. Marlene's approach to her public image was unconventional for an actress of that era. She displayed little concern for societal expectations and garnered fame for her androgynous film roles as well as her bisexuality. She often donned men's clothing, including tuxedos, and popularized trousers as a fashionable choice for women. While Marlene's marriage to Rudolf Sieber was her only official union, her love life was vibrant and diverse. From her early days as a chorus girl in Berlin, she openly and enthusiastically engaged in relationship with partners of both sexes. Initially hesitant, her husband eventually came to accept her bohemian lifestyle, leading them to lead separate lives. Among Marlene's notable partners were fellow actors Gary Cooper, John Wayne, and James Stewart, actresses Frances Day and Ona Munson, directors Joseph von Sternberg and Otto Preminger, and politicians Joseph Kennedy and his sons John and Robert. Her romantic adventures were indeed varied and filled with activity. Sadly, Marlene Dietrich died in Paris on May 6, 1992, of kidney failure. She was 90 years old. After a service at La Madeleine in Paris before thousands of mourners, her body was flown to Berlin, where she was buried in Freidenau Cemetery, close to the house where she was born. Goodbye, and rest in peace, legendary actress and singer Marlene Dietrich. Marlene Dietrich.